a moment in one of the lectures that you gave. This is literally from seven years ago. And it's kind of incredible how much you had your finger on the polls, probably because you are a professor, you're at Columbia, you're probably seeing some stuff on campus that we weren't privy to yet. But I wanna go to this video and then ask you about what we're now seeing in regard to protests against the US support, its unwavering support toward the Israeli government. Let's watch. 38% of young American college age Jews who were surveyed um, feel that it's difficult or impossible to defend Israel. It's indefensible. I mean, that's a, that's a striking and strange number. And uh, obviously, the American political reality doesn't reflect that. Obviously, um, American media doesn't reflect that. And it, neither of them will for a very long time. But if that's what's happening at the base, if that's how people perceive, Things. And we're not talking about an uninformed public, we're, not, we're talking about college age kids. Uh, then uh, th 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 there's gonna be, there, there are gonna be some serious problems for this project. So that was again in 2016, seven years ago, and you were uh, referencing a poll that was conducted by Republican strategist Frank Luntz. Uh, he right. was doing this poll for a pro-Israel conference that he was um, going to do a presentation at, and I think he was probably surprised at what he was seeing in the polling results. What are your thoughts on what we're now seeing among college students today in the United States? And do you think that this movement can grow to a point where maybe the Democratic Party sees the unwavering support toward the Israeli government as a political liability. Well, let me say something before I talk about the change that's going on at the base of the Democratic Party and among young people generally. And this is that at the top of the Democratic Party, from President Biden on down, Senate, House, party leadership, we have a absolute ironclad commitment to whatever Israel wants. In fact, these people are essentially reading talking points that are given to them by APAC. Uh, their, their staffs don't even write this stuff. Uh, they have people writing them for them, writing. And, and if you listen to Biden, I mean, he's saying things that are almost identical to what Israeli military spokesmen and Netanyahu and Israeli ministers are saying. That's the top. That's our government. Uh, that's many other institutions in our society, including most of the corporate mainstream media. The base is changing extremely rapidly. Um, Biden's approval rating among Voters aged 18 to 34 fell from 46 to 31 percent, and that was largely because of the Gaza War in the period over the last four months. That's an NBC poll. 70 percent of voters in this age group disapprove of his handling of the war in Gaza. 70 percent of voters in the age group from 18 to 34. Wow. And we see this on campus. I mean, a couple of years after that interview you just you just ran, um, there was a vote at the, on the Columbia campus. And there were similar votes on campuses all over the country for the university to divest from companies that support the Israeli occupation. The divestment motion won overwhelmingly. The university administration treated the vote with utter contempt in a, in a, in a dismissive, arrogant fashion. President Bollinger acted as if this was a bunch of gadflies. Um, it was it was disgraceful the reaction of the administration. There was no respect whatsoever for the students, and we there's been no change in this or other administrations. That's how very large numbers of students, Arab, Jewish, uh, minorities, uh, students from all backgrounds feel uh, about this issue. Uh, the numbers that these polls uh, have, have been revealing over the last seven, eight, nine, ten years are where young people stand, I think, overwhelmingly all over the country, not just on college campuses. But that is simply not reflected in the institutions that dominate our society, nor the media, nor the political system, nor God help us, our university administrations, which are biased and extremely hostile to Palestinian activism, almost without exception. I mean, look, you're absolutely right about that disconnect. And what I'm wondering is at some point, what the people in power are gonna have to realize is that it is gonna hurt them, it is gonna hurt them politically. And even Biden, I mean, in an incredible admission, members of his administration in a recent Washington Post piece talked about how, oh, you know, the political liability of going against AIPAC is very real, but now all of a sudden we have a sizable portion of the you know Michigan population consisting of Arab Americans who came out to vote for Biden in 2020. And it was an important population within a swing state that Biden absolutely needed. Now Arabs are saying, listen, 
we're gonna sit it out. We're not gonna support Trump, but we're not gonna vote for him. But we're just not gonna vote for president because we don't agree with what Biden is doing. And I sympathize with that. You know, I'm Armenian. I, my ancestors went through a brutal genocide committed by the right. Turks. And I can't watch what's happening to the Palestinian people in Gaza and with a conscience cast a ballot for any presidential candidate that will continue the barbarism that we're seeing on our television screens, on our phones every single day. So what would your advice be to American voters who find themselves in this conundrum? I mean, we're in a really difficult situation. This man has endorsed the Israeli plan to continue to attack the population of Gaza until they feel they've quote unquote eliminated Hamas, an unreal goal. But let's let's go with that that uh, uh, objective. So the, this is an American-Israeli war. We are shipping huge amounts of ammunition to Israel for their 155 millimeter, their 175 millimeter artillery, for their Apache helicopters. Those are American weapons for their F-35s, their F-15s, their F-16s. Those are American weapons. They're 2,000 pound bombs like the one they dropped, the ones they dropped on Jabalia camp a few weeks ago. It's an American-Israeli war. The president is about to get, when he eventually can get it through Congress, another $14 billion of essentially more bombs and more replacements for the weapons that may be used up killing Palestinians. Um, people across this country, especially young people and minorities uh, feel this. I mean, I was talking to an Indian American student. She said, the kind of ra colonial racism that you get here, it reminds me of what my, my ancestors went through in India. African Americans say, you go, to, you go to Palestine and you feel like you, you, you're, you're what your grandparents told you about Jim Crow and segregation in the South. I mean, each, each part of the American population, especially younger people, are sensitive to these things. And how we vote, I'm not young, but how people who feel like I do and you do vote is gonna be a real problem. I think he'll he'll lose Michigan if he doesn't change his policy very, very quickly. I think he may lose Pennsylvania and other states where young people, where minorities, where Arab Americans, where Muslim Americans, where the very large number, I, I talked about the number of Jewish students in 2016 who uh, could, felt they couldn't support Israel. That number is even larger today. I think Jewish Voice for Peace on some campuses has more supporters than, than the groups that support Israel among Jewish students. Those people won't vote for Biden, or at least are gonna have real difficulties uh, voting for Biden. Uh, most of them won't vote for Trump, of course, but that may hand this election, God help us, uh, over to Trump. So it, it's a dilemma and I, I have no answer for it, but I don't see how I could vote for this man. I mean, he's going killing people. I, my niece's family is in Gaza, mm -hmm. they, they're in danger every day. And many of my friends are there. I know people who are there. It's 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 something that you simply cannot abide that we are participating in this slaughter. Yeah, well, I, I clearly share that dilemma with you. Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us, become a young Turk.